Welcome to the Morning Download Podcast, your go-to resource for personal finance, economics, and market insights. In just eight minutes a day, we provide valuable information to help you make better money decisions. Don't forget to sign up for our free newsletter at https semicolon slash slash www.morningdownload.com slash subscribe. Let's dive right in. Hey there, investors. So it looks like the market is pretty steady at the moment, and everyone is eagerly awaiting some key events happening this week. We've got the Fed Chair Powell's press conference, jobless claims data, and the home sales report all lined up. Definitely worth keeping an eye on those. Now here's a cool little tidbit for you. Did you know that the U.S. holds the top spot as the largest economy in the world in terms of nominal GDP? It's quite an impressive feat, right? And when it comes to purchasing power parity, China comes in at a close second. Moving on to the news, it seems that former Federal Reserve Chair Janet Yellen doesn't foresee a recession on the horizon. That's definitely reassuring for investors who might have been worried about the possibility. In other news, the ongoing battle between Binance and the SEC continues to make headlines. It's an interesting clash that could have implications for the cryptocurrency market. Lastly, if you're looking to invest in real estate, we've got some helpful info for you. We'll be sharing the best states to consider when buying a house. It's always good to stay informed when it comes to potentially big investments like these. So, let's talk about the economy and some recent news updates. Janet Yellen, former chair of the Federal Reserve, recently shared her thoughts on the current state of the economy. According to her, the economy is not going downhill. In fact, she highlighted two important factors to support her view. Firstly, she mentioned that the labor market is improving, which is definitely a positive sign. Additionally, she pointed out that inflation is decreasing, as per her analysis. However, Yellen did give a warning. She cautioned that a government shutdown could potentially harm the economy. She emphasized the need for Congress to stay focused and avoid creating any situation that could slow down the momentum. Interestingly, Yellen isn't alone in her views. Most experts seem to agree that a recession is no longer a significant concern. As for the market reaction, it was relatively quiet. The U.S. dollar index experienced a minor decrease of 0.05% on that particular day. Switching gears, let's talk about China and its oil stockpiling. There are a couple of possibilities behind this action. It could be because China can acquire oil at a lower price from countries like Russia and Iran. Alternatively, there are concerns that they might be preparing for an invasion of Taiwan. The exact reason is still uncertain, but as investors, it's always wise to be prepared for any scenario. So what can you do to safeguard your investments? It's crucial to have a diversified portfolio and a solid financial plan in place. Consider keeping some cash on hand in case the markets experience a significant decline due to unexpected events. We should remember the impact of Russia's invasion of Ukraine on the global markets. In other news around the world, Elon Musk denied rumors about a Tesla factory in Saudi Arabia. The Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development OECD, predicts that Germany will face some challenges ahead. On a positive note, the Indian market is showing upward movement. That's the latest update on the economy and some notable news stories. Stay informed, stay diversified, and be prepared for the unexpected. So let's talk about stocks. It wasn't a great day for the markets on Tuesday. Everything seemed to be in the red. The Dow fell 0.87%, and other major indexes in the country saw similar declines. Canada's S&P slash TSX composite dropped 1.23%, while the S&P slash TSX 60 fell 1.24%. China's Shanghai Composite closed 0.03% lower, and India's Bombay Sensex fell 0.01%. Australia's ASX 200 also took a hit, falling 0.47%. The UK's FTSE 250 closed 0.12% down, and Germany's DAX finished 0.40% lower. It's not often that we see international markets moving together like this, but there were a couple of exceptions. France's CAC 40, managed to go up 0.08%, and Italy's FTSE MIB closed 0.60% higher. Now let's talk about oil. It's been making headlines because it keeps rising. In fact, it has gone up by 45% over the past four months. That's why we've added it to our market summary today. Oil prices have had a significant impact on the inflation rate in Canada, which rose for the second month in a row to 4%. 
So it's definitely something to keep an eye on. And that's the latest update on stocks and how they're affecting various markets. So there's some interesting news in the world of crypto. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, or SEC, recently suffered a setback in their case against Binance U.S. They were trying to gain access to Binance U.S.'s software, but a federal magistrate judge denied their request. This whole saga began in June when the SEC sued Binance U.S. and has since been struggling to extract information from the company. But it turns out the judge wasn't convinced by their argument and said he wasn't inclined to allow the inspection at this time. Sounds like a bit of a blow for the SEC. Instead, the judge suggested that the SEC needs to come up with more specific requests for discovery and reach out to a broader range of witnesses. So it seems like it's back to the drawing board for the SEC. The legal battle between Binance and the SEC has been heating up, with the SEC accusing Binance CEO Changpeng CZ Zhao and Binance US of operating an unlicensed exchange. It'll be interesting to see how this all unfolds, but for now, the judge's decision has definitely put a dent in the SEC's plans. Stay tuned for more updates on this crypto controversy. Ah, uh, personal finance. It's a topic on everyone's mind these days. And if you're thinking about buying a house, you want to make sure you're making a smart investment, right? Well, lucky for you, we've rounded up the best states to buy a house in. So let's dive in. First up, we have Pennsylvania. With an average home cost of $254,722, it's definitely an affordable option. Plus, the Pennsylvania House Price All Transactions Index has been steadily increasing, which is always a good sign. Next on our list is North Carolina. While the average home there is a bit pricier at $323,487, the rate of increase is pretty impressive at 4.4% per year, so you might get some serious bang for your buck. Now let's talk about Utah. Yes, it's on the expensive side with an average home cost of $518,806, but hear us out. It's got a family-friendly environment and a lower cost of living. Plus, some areas have had appreciation rates of a whopping 16.8%. Not too shabby. Looking for something more affordable? Kentucky might be the place for you. The average home value there is $197,948. And prices have actually been on the decline. In fact, 26.2% of homes in Kentucky sold below list price in August 2023. It's a buyer's market, my friends. Last but not least, we have New York. Now we know what you're thinking. New York, isn't it super expensive? Well, yes, the average home there costs a hefty $733,845. But hear us out. If you're looking to earn rental income, it could be a smart investment. New York rentals have some serious potential, with studio rentals averaging $3,495 and four-bedroom rentals going for $7,495 in the main cities. Plus, the cumulative appreciation rate for homes over the past 10 years stands at a staggering 80.72%. Now don't get us wrong, there are plenty of other great states to consider. Mississippi, Ohio, and Nebraska often make it onto those best states to own a home in lists. So, do your research and find the perfect place for you. Happy house hunting. Today's personal finance quote comes from the legendary Jim Rogers. He once said, bottoms in the investment world don't end with four year lows, they end with 10 or 15 year lows. Now let's break it down. What Jim is trying to tell us here is that when it comes to the investment world, things don't always bounce back quickly. Sure, we might see some temporary lows that last for a couple of years, but the real bottoms, where the prices hit rock bottom typically occur after a much longer period, like 10 or even 15 years. This quote serves as a reminder that we shouldn't expect instant gratification when we're investing our hard-earned money. Patience is key in the investment game. If you're in it for the long haul, then you need to be prepared for the possibility of experiencing those deep lows before seeing any significant gains. The key takeaway here is that timing is crucial. Trying to predict market bottoms based on short-term fluctuations can be a risky game. Instead, focus on long-term trends and be patient. Remember, slow and steady wins the race in the world of investing. So keep this quote in mind the next time you're tempted to make impulsive decisions in the market. It's a great reminder to stay calm, stay informed, and have a long-term perspective on your financial goals. Happy investing. Today's episode covered a range of topics, including the upcoming events in the market, Janet Yellen's insights on the economy, global stock market trends, 
legal developments in the SEC's case against Binance US, the top states to buy a house, and Jim Rogers' perspective on investment bottoms. Thanks for tuning in to The Morning Download, your go-to podcast for personal finance, economics, and market insights in just eight minutes a day. Don't forget to subscribe for more helpful content and sign up for our free newsletter at morningdownload.com slash subscribe.